guys, it's Jasmine and I'm back today with a highly requested video. So ever since I posted the video telling you guys that I had six job offers, I have been getting so many messages, comments, and DMs asking all of my tips and tricks for resumes as well as the interview process. So I took a poll on Instagram and Snapchat to ask you guys which video you wanted to see and a lot of you guys told me both. So since you guys are requesting both videos, I'm actually going to make this a two-part video. So make sure that you subscribe before you leave so that way you never miss any of my videos and you can get the job that you want as well. So if you're interested in all of my tips to make your resume stand out from everyone else's, continue to watch. so many templates on Google that will give you a generic example of how to make a resume. However, you should never copy a resume template word for word because it is basically generic. It is not going to make you stand out from the next person and that is a mistake that a lot of people do. They go on Google, they find a template for a resume, they put their name on it, change a couple of things about it, but in all actuality, the resume is super generic. And when employers go and look at your resume, it's so basic that they really just don't see anything special about you. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your resume is very unique to you and it includes everything that is special about you, not based on what other people's resumes look like. Then the next thing you want to do is make sure that your resume is specific for the job in which you want. Then you want to create an objective. Make sure your objective is like one to three sentences long. You don't want it to be a long paragraph. If you're wondering what an objective is, it needs to be the first section of your resume below your personal information. It is the first part of your resume that employers are going to see. It basically tells them what job you're seeking and why, as well as what makes you the perfect candidate for that job position. So. You don't want it to be super long and be a long paragraph. You want it to be short and sweet, but detailed as possible. The next thing you want to do is create a small section of your resume with all of your special skills or anything that you can do specific to that job. So for example, my specialty is ICU, include like ventilator management, IV administrations, um, blood product administration, CRRT, balloon pump, etc, etc, etc. You don't want it to be super long, but it would be ideal to have like six bullets on each side. So don't say I can manage a, a patient that's ventilated. Just put ventilator management and then kind of go on from there. Um, medication administration. So before you guys freak out and say, well, what if I don't have any special skills? I'm only a student. That's fine. You're going to put your clinical experience there. And this is going to include all the areas that you touch based on in clinical. So then you're going to put all of your education. So if you are fresh out of high school and you've only attended one college, put your college first and then your high school. If you are like me and you've been to like a million colleges, simply because you move around a lot, you want to include your last three. So I include where I got my ADN from and the last two places I did my prereqs from. Simple, right? You want to try to keep it as simple and short as possible. So the next thing is make sure that you do include any former employment and some employers like to see the last seven years unless you've had a million jobs within the last seven years. It is actually not a good thing to include like 10 or 11 employers within the last year. And I'm exaggerating here, but if you are leaving your jobs every three to four to six months or even every year, it basically tells an employer that you're not dependable and they can't rely on you to be a steady employee at their facility so that is one of the negative things that will actually cause you not to even get a call for an interview. So I'm not telling you guys to lie and say, you know, that you've worked at this one place for five years. But if you have had several employees, just include the last three. So the last thing that you want to include in your resume is any license or certifications that you may hold. 
For example, if you are BLS certified, ACLS certified, CRT certified, include all of that in your resume. If you're med surge certified, if you have, um, you know, your CNA, medical assistant, LPN, RN, include everything because that shows them education is very important to you. You are trying to get as much knowledge as you can to better yourself to be the best in the position that you're applying for. For example, if you just have registered nurse and you don't have your BLS and your ACLS, they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, that's something else that we have to pay for her to get. So make sure those are things that you have before you apply for the job or, or at least before you're hired for a position, okay? All right. Now, let me tell you what's gonna make your resume stand out. No employer wants to see a six page resume. This is why I say keep it short, sweet, simple as possible. The ideal length of a resume is one page. And I know you're like, what? Yes, one page. When an employer is going over your resume, they do not wanna sit there for 15 minutes reading all this stuff you've done, all the reasons why you think you should be employed. Like, they're not gonna do it. And I know this personally from experience. I have been a part of peer interviews as well as the director come in to me and a couple of other nurses and be like, hey, could you guys go over through some of these resumes and let me know which ones you think should have an interview or not. If they're super long, I don't wanna go through them. Your employer doesn't wanna go through them. Even though you think that it's making you look amazing because you've done all these things. No one wants to sit through that. Make your resume one page and at the maximum two pages long. No more than that because you will simply get looked over. The next thing is do not create a resume that's full of crazy fonts. Stick to Times New Roman, a font of 12. So the next thing which is going to tie into our next video, once you get your interview, make sure to print your resume out on resume paper. Some people don't know this, but you do not want to print your resume out on regular printer paper. There is specific paper made for resumes that you can get at Walmart, Target, or like a Rite Aid, a Walgreens. It's everywhere. It's thicker and more sturdier than regular printer paper. So once your employer has a million resumes sitting in front of them, and majority of them are printed out on regular white printer paper and they see yours which is printed out on resume paper their eye is generally going to go to what is different and they'll pick yours up give it a glance remember your interview etc etc and it just kind of makes you stand out a little bit more especially if you don't have any experience so those are all of my tips for writing the perfect resume if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave it below in the comment section, as well as make sure to subscribe before you leave and turn on the notification bell somewhere down there. So that way you never miss any of my videos, as well as YouTube will notify you when I do post a new video. Make sure to stay tuned for tomorrow's video, which is going to cover everything about the interview process. And until the next video, I'll talk to all of you guys later. Bye. Bye.